Hey guys, this is Wojtek, and today we're going to take a look at overriding the Anim Instance class. And what this is going to allow us to do is be able to pass uh, various parameters as well as do certain operations within C++ and then push them up to our animation blueprint. In this case, we're going to take the default third-person animation blueprint and override it to expose a couple of the variables that we're currently retrieving from our character and then passing them uh, downstream. So let's get started. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and start looking at how we're going to override our animation instance. But before we begin, let's first take a look at our current animation blueprint and see what we're getting ourselves into. So if you go to Mannequin, Animations, Third Person Animation Blueprint, we can take a look at what's happening here. So we have our various blend space definitions, we also have our state machine, um, and then lastly we have our event graph. And this is the bit of logic that we're going to replace and move into our C++ code. So specifically, <clears throat> these three variables we're now going to bring in from our C++ class. And let's just take a look at what's actually happening in here. So we have our blueprint update animation call, which is bringing in delta time if we need it. We're then doing a little bit of checking to make sure that whatever's coming in from that is valid. Um, specifically the pawn owner, which we are then casting to our player character. From then, we get our various properties. So our custom getter that we made a couple of tutorials back for the animation blended. We're also getting the movement component from which we can say, hey, am I in air? So am I jumping? And then lastly, we're getting the velocity um, from which we're getting the vector length and turning that into our speed. So let's go ahead and start translating these properties into C++ code. And to begin, we're gonna to go to our um, content browser, to our C++ classes, and just create a new C++ class based off of anim instance. So to do so, um, you wanna say show all classes, and then as we start <clears throat> searching for the anim instance class, you'll notice there's two of them. There's the vehicle anim instance, which is um, primarily used for uh, vehicle definitions, as well as our sort of default um, anim instance that we're gonna be overriding. So that's the guy you wanna select, hit next, and then let's give it a name. So I'm gonna call this guy player anim instance. And let's go ahead and create this class and see what it looks like within our code. Okay, so our class is generated, and let's just take a look at what's happening in our header file, and not too much, likewise in the CVP file, it's pretty empty. So let's go ahead and start filling it in with our properties. So we're gonna create a new public section, and now we're gonna add in the is in air boolean. So actually first, let's decorate it with our U property definition. And we're just gonna say edit anywhere, blueprint, read and write. And our category is going to be movement. Or actually, you know what? Our category is going to be animations. Okay, so our boolean is going to be called is in air because we want to stay in line with whatever our variable names were within our blueprint definition. I'll show you why in just a second. So we're going to copy this u property definition, and then we're going to say bool is animation blended. And then lastly, we're gonna bring in our float for the speed. Or sorry, our speed variable, which is a float. Okay, so there's our three properties. Pretty straightforward. And now we're actually gonna look at adding in some method signatures to this guy. So let's go ahead and dive into the uanim instance class and see what's happening in there. Okay, so in our uanim instance class, we're gonna look for a method called native initialize animation. And what this method does is it basically lets you set up a bunch of the um, almost post initialized definitions for our anim instance class. So think of it as the begin play or the post initialize uh, method signature from our player um, class. Now the native update animation is almost like the tick. So you'll notice it takes in the delta seconds as well. And this is the equivalent representation within our blueprint um, of this event here, event blueprint update animation. So we're gonna take these two method signatures and we're gonna overwrite them. And as usual, the easiest way to do it is just steal this method signature, 
leave and take the semicolon. And go back to our header file, drop it in with a override. Cool. So let's go back to our atom instance and now grab this guy as well. And there are two method signatures. Now, the other thing we want to do, because if you recall, our variables <clears throat> have certain default states. So speed is zero, is an error is false, and our is animation blended is true. So we want to include a constructor for our atom instance within which we can define these default states for these properties. Okay, so we have our constructor, we have our um, two overwritten methods. What else do we need? So we have this one guy here, or rather this guy here, trying to get the pawn owner. And if we do this every time, trying to get this um, pawn definition, it's a little bit costly. It's constantly reaching out and trying to retrieve this variable. So what we can do is we can grab it once during the initialization of our blueprint, cache it, and then just make references to it as we, as we see fit. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a private variable. And it's just going to be of a type pawn. And we're going to call this guy owner. So this is going to be the owner class of this blueprint instance. All right, so we have our header definitions all set up. Now let's go ahead and dive into our CPP file. So first things first, we're going to override our constructor. So there's our constructor. And we're going to say is in air equal false, is animation blended equals true, and speed equals zero. Now we can start overriding or rather implementing our other method signatures. So let's grab this guy here and start throwing uh, some details into it. So it's going to be a void return player instance native initialize animation. So within this method what we're going to do is we're going to make a call to our parent native initialize animation and you always want to make sure to um, make calls to the base classes as they do um, a handful of certain attributes or certain behaviors that you may not have access to so always ensure to call your parents um, and in here what we're going to do is we're going to cache our pawn so cache pawn for later use so or sorry not our pawn our owner which is of type pawn and we can say try to get pawn owner. You'll notice this method is exactly the same as within our blueprint. So some of these guys are one-to-one. -one. Some of them you have to work a little bit harder to get at. Uh, one of them is going to be the vector length, and I'm, I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so we have our pawn owner on initialization. Cool. Now we can go ahead and add in the native update animation call. And again, make a call to your um, your super. And we're going to pass in the delta seconds. There we go. Okay. So now we always want to ensure that this guy here, this owner that we're going to be accessing for all of our properties is available. So ensure that owner is valid. We're going to say if owner is not valid, we're just going to return. So, you know, don't collect any uh, any more details. Just simply say, hey, we don't have an owner. Go back and try again on the next uh, on the next tick. So, if we get past this point, we can do a couple of checks now. We can say, hey, is our pawn, sorry, is our owner of type play a character. And you'll notice um, we have a little underline because we didn't bring in our player character header. So let's bring that guy in. So there's our player character um, definition. This guy should now 
correct itself. And now we can say, hey, is our owner this type of class? And if you're using an Anim instance from multiple player classes, this is an easy way to now um, kind of reuse logic as, you know, as much as you can. Okay, so we have this guy here. Now we got to cast him to our player character type. So we're just going to say player character equals cast. And we're going to pass in our owner. And again, always make sure to double check any variable that you're instantiating is actually filled with something and it's not a null pointer. Otherwise, your players are going to have a bad time. So if we have our player, we can now go ahead and start filling in these three properties. So first we're going to say is an error equals, and if you recall, in our blueprint, so what is in error doing? Well, now that we have our player, we can get the movement component, is falling, getter, and then we can fill in this variable. So player character get movement component get is oh sorry is falling and that's it now once we have this guy in place we can go ahead and do the same thing for is animation blended so player character get is animation blended because this was a custom getter that we introduced in one of our last tutorials, we don't have to go down any other sort of um, um, nested property of our of our class. And then lastly, we're going to say that the speed. So speed <clears throat> is the player character get velocity. Again, we're doing the same thing that our blueprint's doing. And then we're going to get the vector length. Now, vector length is a helper um, method of the Kismet Math Library. And if you're um, including that, you can go ahead and make a call to this. Or you can just say, get me the size property. And it's the exact same, um, the same definition. So one thing you'll notice is our player character is underlined where this pointer to incomplete class type is not allowed. If you get this type of error, what that's telling us is something off of this line is not available to the scope of this class. And what that normally ends up being is one of the sort of accessors you're referencing past the point of your object definition. So in this case, the movement component is of a UPON movement component pointer and all this is really telling us is we're trying to make a call to this thing, but we don't know what this type is, so there's not much we can do. Um, we can't operate on it because this class has no scope. And to fix that, all we really need to do is just say include game framework pawn movement component. So if you ever get these weird little, hey, I can't process something, always make sure that whatever the data type is that you're trying to get at is brought in as part of your header definitions. And as soon as this is brought in, hey, look at that, we're all good. Okay, so and actually I'm just gonna rearrange these headers so they are past my, um, past my instance. And it's a little bit cleaner. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile this and see about hooking up our class to our animation blueprint. So I did make just one mistake uh, during the compilation process, and these things are just as important to show as the guided path. So let's see what's happening here. So we got this exception called missing comma in variable declaration specifier. And if we go into this uh, line, what it's basically saying is, hey, I have a category definition, but I included a space between anim and instance, and now it's thinking that instance is actually another um, decorator for my new property definition. So rather than um, doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the space. Um, I could either you know make it like this, so it's a single word, or I'm just going to say in quotes animation and just make it a little bit more more clean. So let's do that and recompile.
Great, so our project recompiled, and now let's go ahead and start hooking up this animation instance to our animation blueprints. So if you go to the Tutorial Resources Animations folder, we're going to right-click, go to Animation, and create a new animation blueprint. And you'll notice in here we have a couple of different options. We've got the parent class that we want to use, and in our case we're going to use the one we just made, which is the Player Anim Instance. And then we also have the skeleton that we can attach to this animation instance. And we've got the two Mixima ones we were playing around with earlier, as well as the Unreal Mannequin. So let's go ahead and select that, click OK. And we're going to call this BP uh, Player Animation. Okay, so if we pop open this um, animation blueprint, you'll notice we have our properties already populated. So we have is an air, is animation, and speed. So whenever we need to now get access to those properties, we can just right click and say, you know, speed. And there are our C++ variables. But we have a couple of problems. So one of them is our blend spaces and all of our posing stuff um, hasn't been defined. Our event graph is empty, but that's okay because it's driven by C++, but we do need to um, deal with our animation graph for right now. So one little trick you can do is if we go back to our mannequin animation blueprint, and the only thing you'll notice is uh, one of the variables has a question mark in it. If we take off the question mark, what then we can do is go ahead and just copy this whole um, pose blend space definition, including the state machine. And if we just control C it, and then paste it into our new blueprint, look at that, everything comes along for the ride, um, except for the final pose, which you have to hook up. Um, again, you can use the old one as a reference. So our blend poses by bool is the one that actually goes to the final animation pose. So we just go like that, compile, look at that. And everything still runs. And if we go into our state machine, that's already set up. It's making use of our um, C++ variables. So this is starting to look pretty, pretty good. Now we can go ahead and start testing this out. But before we test it out, we need to add some log messages just so we can see that things are working as expected. Um, now let's go ahead and go back to our C++ code and, and add those in. So I'm just going to bring in um, engine.h so we can have access to our log files. And then somewhere down in here, uh, let's do it after the size, we're just going to print a couple of um, debug messages. So we're going to say gengine, add on screen debug message, and we're just going to say minus one, uh, let's say five seconds, then we're going to say F color, let's make it yellow, and then we're gonna pass in some debug information. So is in air, and then I'm just gonna add it to a new string, which is going to do a quick little inline if check. So is in air, so if it's true, we're gonna return the word true, and if it's false, then we're gonna just bring back false. Cool. So we have one of these guys, now let's do the same thing for is animation blended. So if it's true, bring that in. And then lastly, let's do the same thing for our speed. Except because speed is a float, um, we can't really do this, but we can say f string, sanitize float, and pass in our speed variable. All right, so let's recompile and now actually play around with this animation blueprint. Okay, we're recompiled. Let's go back to our new animation blueprint. Everything should still be saved, but we need to do one more thing, which is reparent our player character uh, blueprint to use our new animation blueprint. And to do that, we're gonna go to the third person um, blueprint folder, third person character blueprint. Let's just open up in the full window. And if you go down to the mesh section, this is the guy that does all the all the heavy lifting. You'll notice on the right hand side under the animation section, there's the anim class. And over here, we now have access to various animation blueprints. Um, specifically, our new one, BP player animation. So if we just select it, you'll notice the idle animation just does whatever it's supposed to do. If we recompile, no errors, everything's still okay. 
And now we actually start our game. Yeah, there's our log messages. And you know our kicks work, our punches work, and as I'm moving around, you'll notice the speed correctly displays. If I jump, our is in air attribute changes to true. And as animation blended um, just stays false until we punch or kick. And you can see how all of that stuff alternates. So not bad. Um, now that we have this thing externalized into our C++ code, we have a lot more flexibility, maintainability, and it just makes it a little bit easier to manage our game going forward. So thank you for tuning in, and I hope to see you guys next time when we start expanding our player character and actually messing around with some of these properties like walking, running, and introducing some footsteps. Hope to see you guys next time.